Hey everyone, it's John Isaias here from The Automator, and one of the hero members had asked something. He was deciding if he wanted to go his own way and kind of do project work and freelance, and was asked if I mind sharing information about my business and some ideas. And I said, I, I'm, I'm very open, right? I love sharing and, and telling people. I don't have to give dollar figures, but we'll talk about um, ratios and stuff and where we go in. Some things to consider, and Isaias and I both have been you know, doing a lot of our own work forever um, at times. So we're going to discuss uh, the general layout on things. Um, should we start first with just currently where we're making our money? Right. So it's a, it's a good start. Like when he was asking about how should I start? Well, let me tell you how it looks right now and how it got there, right? So this image that you're sharing right now is basically a, break, a, a breaking down how our revenue is set up right now. Mostly is client work, you know, 69% is client work then courses, hero membership, and other software. And other software means things that we build and we try to sell, right? So uh, regarding client work, you notice that that is our, our bulk. Now, Joe, can you tell me what was the original idea when we started working? Yeah, because sure. <laughs> yeah, initially when we first had our call forever ago, I had said how like I would love to put together courses because courses to me, they're a gravy train, so to speak, because you create them once, and then you, you, do, you do need to market them, don't get me wrong, and you can spend money there, but they're done, right? And yeah, you need to answer questions here. But in Udemy, especially for a short term, I was making, almost I hit $1,000 a month at one point. Um, and the problem, I, I can go into problems with Udemy also, by the way, but um, especially if you're focused on auto hotkey, it's so niche, you just don't sell a lot. But it was, right. you know, it was decent, but the, the problem is um, with AI coming, like I don't, I've seen reports like in the next three to five years, there's not even going to be programmers. So I'm really hesitant to be putting too much into courses. At least at first I thought they're going to be a long term. I can put them in. My son's going to be able to enjoy revenue from these courses, right? Like, you know, as yeah. like, so yeah. I a picture. but I don't think that's going to be sadly the case any longer. Um, things now, just this is the interesting thing about that. So we started with recording courses first, right? But as we were noticing that it was, we are kind of like, it's not doing what we want. It's not doing what we want. We started picking up some client work. We started picking up, picking up here, there. And then we, when we look at the numbers, and this is really important, if you're going to go, you know, freelance, give numbers about everything you do, how much you're spending, how much is coming sure. in and so on. Because then the numbers are going to tell you what to do. Then we started realizing hold on, most of the revenue is coming out of client work. And then I think we started focusing on client work for real, like last year, something like that. That's when we started having like focusing on, okay, Isaiah, don't do this course. Let's focus on this one pro project for now, right? And we're going to keep the courses, uh, you know, on the weekends. And so part, part of it, say also, work, right? yeah, part of it also though was, I know, so I have a master's in both, I have an undergrad in marketing and a master's in market research. And I spent 20 years learning a lot of stuff about marketing and, and pricing and things. And one of the things I was adamant about was not not looking at who's on Fiverr and trying to compete with Fiverr, right? So right. I, I didn't want to do client work competing for you know a really, really low dollar per hour. So I honestly just said, what do I think we're worth? And I think we set it at around $73 is what we charge an hour right now for normal people. Hero members get 25% off, right? But the main point there is that price definitely restricts us from a lot of client work we could be doing if yes. it was far less, but it's, you know, I, I'm okay with that. I'd rather be putting, building courses that are somewhat evergreen, right? So now lately we've had a lot of people wanting to us to do client work and where I've been okay saying, all right, let's, let's focus on, on, you know, I don't, I don't like turning people away. Not, not for the money. They want to save time and they're passionate about it. I love helping them. Right. So I'm like, right. Hey, our, our courses can wait, you know, and let's make sure we meet, meet their demands. Um, but right. And that, and now that brings us to the point, like how do you get clients? Right. So the, the main idea, so you're working, Here's the thing, and, and I think you, Joe, you have more experience than me on this. I started with a YouTube channel, and then from the YouTube channels, I started getting emails about people like, can I do this one thing? Can you do this for me? And so on. Now, on your on your experience, how did you start for you? How did what? 
how did how did it start for you finding client work that wanted to do auto hotkey stuff? Like for me, it was through the YouTube channel that I had at that time. Like that's how you met me, <laughs> and I also have done like two or three scripts for people already like that. I didn't actually focus on doing auto hockey work, but that's how it started, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, for me, and that's where you know I have a background in data science, and I had been programming in SPSS forever, um, and that was where I was doing that project work. Um, and that I charge $100 an hour, right? Like, because it's 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 a very advanced skill and not many people have it. Um, so occasionally also, by the way, I still do that because it's good money and I can do it in my sleep. It's one thing I'm very good at, but I, I get bored doing it. So I don't do it that often. But when clients come to me, I'll do it for them. And uh, anyway, it was from talking to Jackie that um, when I was working in corporate world, I'm like, hey, I'll, you know, I'll start a web, I'll start a YouTube channel. Um, and then I kind of kept making it and, then we get some client people asking me for stuff. And yeah, and I realized I'm, we're offering a crazy, we're changing people's lives, right? With the stuff we do. Yeah. And that was when I actually met Maestrieth. And I realized, unfortunately, I met him a little too late because if I had met him a little earlier, I would have kept my really crazy high paying job at TI and just had uh, him keep my job, right? Because right, yeah. he was so efficient. Like I could have paid him and gone to Tahiti and no one would ever known. Um, <laughs> but that was when I quit TI because I, I we started getting some client work, um, and that was where I realized people like him and you could do. They were so much better at programming than I was that they they were so much more efficient. I can find people that really know what they're doing, um, and the clients win because they get much better code. But it's not a crazy price, right? So, so anyway, yeah, that's and how right that now. How how is the bulk of our clients come to us? Like how how do we? Well, yeah, sure. There's there's several sources, right? One, one is just YouTube alone, which I think I make around. I used to make more, and there was some sort of a big shift several, I'd say, a year and a half ago on YouTube because our views are are going up, and we have more subscribers. We hit ten thousand earlier this month, but um, I used to make more than a hundred dollars a month, and then for some reason they changed their payout ratio, and so now I still make like a hundred and ten dollars a month. So there's a little bit of revenue, but. That's a big lead magnet, right? And in YouTube is a great way to demonstrate you know what you're doing, right? So right. Um, it's a great way to demonstrate your skill. And also, I did videos and I put them on my LinkedIn page before I even really did YouTube because people could see you have a clue what you're doing, right? There's no interview, pro like the interview is a breeze because people watch videos and go, I see him do it, right? Like they know yeah. you're already qualified, right? So, right. Yeah. Um, that's a really smart <laughs> move. But yeah, I'd say, um, YouTube is a is a big lead generator, as is Udemy still. We get people from Udemy that come to us. But the newsletter, I'd say, is it's hard to tell, really. But the we have uh, 6,500 or so people on our newsletter, which is another really, yeah. really important thing to realize, is start an email um, contact database. Always right. track your customers and have a way. And, and all, honestly, don't even stick with just email. I should have done it years ago and done more texting, right, and having phone numbers. But track your customers. And so be able to, and the other thing is just get back out in front of them as often as you can. And the newsletter is a great way to do that. Right. Cause yeah, that's the point. Like, like it's not about like, they're going to answer that specific newsletter. It's just the fact that they're in the back of You are in their back of the head. Exactly. And when something right. pops up, they're going to say like, Oh yeah, this guy probably knows what he's. Which is the same thing about releasing videos on YouTube. You know, as you release yeah. them, suddenly they see one pop up and go, oh, I actually had a project I meant to talk to him about, right? Like, um, so yeah. yeah. Especially, especially when what you're doing is very similar to what they want, then like, oh, sure. I saw you were talking about right. scraping data. I have a page that I wanted to extract data from. I know that you know how to do it because you were talking about it, right? So I keep talking about it all the time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Think of different ways to show your skills, even though to you, it's really the same thing. If you're not an expert in an area, the example needs to be very close to what that person's trying to do for them to make that jump to realize, oh, wait a minute, I, I need to do that. Like, that's really cool. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, now, then, let me tell you something. Uh, yeah, but, sorry about the. So, what I was going to say is like, it is not that simple to just start off. And, I, and what I would say from my experience is I had a job and I just didn't quit everything to start working on something like this, right? So it was at least when I started my own company with when I was selling stuff, right? So I had my job and I was at the same time selling stuff, right? So I was having yeah, two sure. jobs at the same time. 
So I was, and in this case, if we bring it to this framework, it is like, you're going to start, you're going to keep your job if you don't have enough savings, right? Because if you have one year savings that you can say, I'm going to stop working for a year, then this doesn't apply to you. But if you don't have that kind of money, what you can do is just keep your job and in your free time, so to speak, then create videos, create something that puts you out there so that people see you. And you will start kind of like getting people's attention. And at some point, you're going to have some clients plus your job. The key point is when you start feeling like pushed, like, hold on, that I'm working too many hours, that's when you start realizing, I probably should do this full time. And that's when you will save some money to say, I'm going to have three, six months there. I'm going to quit my job and now focus on getting or generating as many clients as possible that can keep me up, you know, paying my rent and paying my basic uh, stuff, which is probably the next topic. Like, what are the things that we spend money on? <laughs> well, it's, yeah, I was going to say um, there are. Well, before we do, though, let me let me jump back one into here into this chart and mention one thing that uh, I had a suspicion it might happen, but I was surprised at how strong it was. The hero membership, so we we charge, um, I think it's $15.99 a month or a discounted rate, depending on when you signed up, yeah. the hero membership. And um, we're making, you know, okay money at that. Now, granted, I'm paying for Isaias and Irfan and Rizwan all to be at the hero meetings also. Every, you know, we have three hours a week um, on two hours on Friday and one hour on Saturday where we're all, so I'm paying for these guys plus my time. And those are outgoing costs, but we get revenue off of their membership fees, which it's getting close where like that's also actually breaks even. It's pretty close. But what's really interesting is, and it has to do with, you learn a lot about it in marketing, which I do a lot about marketing, but not really sales. And people need to trust, like and trust you in order to give you money, right? Like that's when it becomes very easy. And that's true. Hero members, once they start like coming in, they, they, they trust you clearly because we're showing them we know what we're doing every week, right? And they love it. They end up buying a lot of our courses, you know, a lot. Of, and of course, they get a discount, which is part of the, the whole plan. But they also do client work and stuff, too, because there's stuff we can't cover. We, the hero membership, we help them work through stuff. Often they, they're like, you know what? It I just rather pay someone to get it done, right? So yeah. it's a great lead gen um, also for client work and for our courses and they actually even so the other one is the other software. We sell a couple of things. Only one tool, our prompt assistants, nineteen ninety nine, I think somewhere yeah. there. Um, we have a couple other tools like around five or six bucks. But most of the stuff we let people donate. Right now, this was a really really important thing to realize. Also, that I, I learned later, way later. I wish I did it earlier. Don't don't give your and I might even switch our stuff to where we don't give anything away. Quote quote, give it away. Maybe make it ninety nine cents. Right. Because if people are willing to give you 99 cents, they're far, far more likely to be willing to pay you more and more and more because they trust you, right? And you build that trust. Right. When they get something for free, one, they don't even value it. But two, they don't they don't at all, they're not likely to give you money, right? So right. that's why we are, that's the main reason. We're not, because we're making money off the $399, you know, um, yeah. scripts. It's that, it's the likelihood that they'll either become a hero member or buy a course or whatever. So it, it's just it, trust building. It, it's right. It helps people open their wallet a little to where later they'll open the wallet more. Right. So just something right. to consider of have lower hanging fruit. Also have lead magnets that you can have out there that are free or close to free or whatever, but get them to come in. And then you um, especially do drip campaigns in one way or another to them to keep building that trust. Right. So yeah. One which of the is things great. that, one of the things that people don't understand, especially younger people, is that, hey, why should I pay for stuff when yeah. I can do that myself, right? Yeah. Or why why would you use something that is free, like a hotkey, and then charge for it? Well, the, what we're charging for is the time that you're going to save. So what you're paying for is not the software. You're not paying for the hotkey script. You're paying for not spending six hours trying to figure out something that I can do in five minutes. Well, there's actually, that. You know what? That it's short story good. of the yeah. um, the guy that goes to a nuclear power station because the people at the power station is not running optimally, right? So they call in this expert. The expert comes in, walks around for two hours with a clipboard, look reading metrics stuff, or whatever. Yeah. Finally, at the end of two hours, comes and says, "This meter is wrong. You need to replace this." And right. so, and it's like two hundred dollars for the meter, right? 
So they replace it. He leaves. They replace it. They're back up to premium power. So they're making gobs of money, much, much more money, money, right? Six months later, they get his invoice in the mail and it's for like $20,000. And so the guy's like, you were here for two hours. Like what, how can you justify $20,000 for two hours work? Can you itemize this? And so the expert says, sure, I'm happy to itemize it. You know, for the $200 for this. Right. Mm -hmm. Identifying where, what was broken that's the nineteen thousand eight hundred. Right? <laughs> it took me if twenty you years. That, you wouldn't have paid for me. <laughs> yeah, it took me twenty years to learn how to identify this, and that's what you're paying for, right? So same no, thing for us. That's why you're paying, you know, the seventy or if you're a hero member, fifty three an hour is we're we're experts, right? Like right. it takes a lot of time learning how to do this, and that's why they'll pay you also. But yeah, that's right. them you're an expert. That's, that's so. basically the main idea. If you're young and you have time to learn these kind of things, that's great because older people who have no time because I have to focus on paying rent, I have to focus on paying this and that. When I'm at my list somewhere else, I don't want to spend six hours trying to figure out what is wrong with this script. If I can pay somebody else to do it, I gladly do it most of the time, yeah. right? Now... In my case, I'm specialized in finding those issues. So that's my job, right? But if you think, oh, no, I shouldn't pay for that, that's fine. Just go ahead and spend the time doing it. If you like yeah. it, that's perfect. But there are some people who need to focus on making their business run, but they don't have yeah. the time to waste which, on that. Which, by the way, this is more of the, a lot of these things we're talking about more about the marketing side of things. But what I told Isaiah a week or two ago was like, we we really need to, when we meet with someone, document how much the way they're currently doing things is costing them because they don't realize like, hey, if we could knock off, like if we could cut the time it takes to do it in half, well, what are they paying people per hour and how often are they doing it? Because they may think, well, I don't want to pay you a thousand dollars to do this, but you know what? In three months, that'll pay for it. And the rest of the time, you're going to be banking money, right? Like it. So legitimizing the cost, getting them to understand what it's costing them up front can really right. help you make what your sale real much cost. easier. Right. 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 And just uh, as a little side note on that, like I was talking to one of our clients and um, Eric kind of created some function for him. And then after a while, he, he, he was like, there's something about the function that is not working right and is taking a long time and, and I, I don't want to fix it. Can you take a quick pick? And I just went ahead and looked at the code and I say, probably is right here. The problem probably is here. We should just change this. And then the next day he said like, holy crap, you don't know. I spent three hours checking on it and what you just did um, fixed it. How did you know? And I said, I don't know. I just knew from experience that that's where the problem problem might be. That's what they are paying for. This is a person that he's his time. He earns way much more money doing his job than sitting with me there trying to figure out a problem. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Now talking about costs, that's the next topic. Yeah. Like, well, what do let, we let me pay? finish. Let me switch back to that real quick before we switch, which is the whole right. other big point of identify when it, it is this, like two years ago i brought this up to you i was listening to a, a course in my car and i had that big aha mo i didn't because it was from the course but it was really brilliant of like you need to find people with a a big ass problem um, and then and not only they need to be able to pay for it but they need to easily be able to pay for it but it, it really gets back to look for that whale or that target audience that can truly easily afford what you're trying to do and hone right. in on them because it's so much easier to sell to them than it would be to your random person who can't afford stuff. Right. So exactly. that targeting your customer, I can't tell you, emphasize that enough. Um, and I'm happy if you guys ever want to have a call talking about how to brainstorm on that. Cause it, it's a, such right. a game changer. It's crazy. So anyway, costs, right? So Obviously, there's a lot of different costs involved, including if, first off, if you have, like, in today's day and age, I don't know who has offices anymore and why, but, um, it, it you know, it, <laughs> it is a, right. a thing. But um, then there's, you know, computer costs, regular computer costs in software, in updating your software, um, and then licensing for Windows or other tools. Like, I, I pay, do you remember, this case? is it like 180 or so a year for Zoom, I think? It's around right. there. Exactly. Yes. Um, yes. Right. Like 
almost 100 almost 200 dollars right yeah and um um then there's crisp we were using for a while for silencing some of the background noise but zoom actually did better and, and took care of that right. and we stopped using um, that yeah. right. <laughs> but then here's the thing so i would say i think the biggest cost for you joe because you're the one who is employing us right oh that yeah wait, right so okay. but that is not applicable to everybody if you're just starting out you probably will not have employees so you don't have to think about wages that way but think about it for your own wages right so that's one of the biggest issues that people do when, when, when the biggest mistakes that people make when when they're kind of like going as uh, freelance is that they don't calculate their own wages right and that's the biggest thing that you have to keep in mind how much are you earning right now well you're earning let's say 20 30 dollars an hour then you cannot quit your job if your client work is not making you 30 dollars an hour because oh, you more, have to keep your, yeah. yeah, exactly. So you cannot keep your lifestyle that way, right? So yeah. that's the first question you have to answer. And when we talk about wages, it's not really for employees. Your wages come into play right there as well. Well, also, and then, you know, are you going to pay your own medical insurance and I, security and unemployment and, you know, all the other things that like, yeah, when you have a steady job that someone else is paying for you, like that come with that. So you're right. It's not apple to apple type of thing. Right. But, yeah. Now, um, after that, I think that's that that goes without saying. Right now, in this day and age, if you have a business and you don't have a website, like yeah, you're you're wrong. <laughs> like that, that that doesn't go. Like you cannot have a business without a website somehow. Um, even if it is a Facebook page, it doesn't matter if it is just one one online place where people can find you. Now, we don't usually use things like Instagram, Facebook because. It's limiting. You, you can just do certain types of things. That's where the website comes into play. And as soon as you have a website, then there's web hosting costs, right? Yeah. But but also, if you run a restaurant, you know, a small restaurant, having a Facebook page, you know what? That might be okay, right? If you're in a small, right. whatever. If you work in technology, people are going to expect you to have a website and, you know, maybe even to collect, like with our tool, we can do the billing online, which is really, really handy, uh, because yes. also you don't get people's credit card info and it takes PayPal or Stripe and it can all go through it, but I don't see their, I don't have to worry about any of that crap, which is amazing. Right. So yeah, but right. to your point is that there's, we, we pay, if we keep up with the licensing, our, our main tool um, for WordPress for doing the downloads and all that stuff is 250, 300 a year, roughly. Right. Then there's things like your domain fees, other plugins, which like the newsletter plugin. We have a couple other yes. plugins paid for, not a lot, but things that add up. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. hosting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my hosting, that's I nice. think I paid four hundred for three years or something like that. I, which by the way, even with IT companies and stuff, you can negotiate. Like they they wanted like five hundred dollars for three years or something like that, and I said, what if I pay you? Um, X amount now up front, can I get it for this much? And they they dropped the price and did it. Um, so I was I was really awesome. happy. Yeah. Now we talked a little bit about yeah, hosting your videos like YouTube and Udemy right. and stuff like that. But um for certain types of, of video, you might not want it um on YouTube, like right. publicly available and stuff like that. Or you have other limitations with YouTube, and then you might need to have video hosting. Yeah. So right now, what you're using, yeah, I think, is Bluebeam, right? Yeah. Well, Bluebeam has two different plan um, schemes. I can't think of a better way to say it. What charging ways? One is you pay like a monthly or maybe annual subscription, but they also have a forever thing. You buy X bandwidth, okay. and it's forever, right? And so when I saw that, I'm like. You betcha I'm doing that. And I've I've granted I've got it up to a lot now and I've spent probably a thousand dollars, maybe a little more on it, but I don't have to worry about that fee ever, right? So right, yeah. as long as I don't run a business. <laughs> right. <laughs> Definitely. So in the end, this is this uh, the other thing. Like just working for yourself does not mean you're gonna make a lot of money if you don't know how much you're spending on tools and platforms that you need to run your business. So yeah. I, I go to my main point at the beginning, keep a very, very close eye on the money, on yeah. the number, right? Because that's what is going to tell you what is working, what is not. 
it, it also assess risks, you know, and what you're doing because I forget what they're called. There are two learn um, WordPress type things where uh, you can do the the course hosting. There's two main oh. ones that are. Um, I can't remember the name. Oh, of them. I remember you. You had one, and we never used it. Right. Um, we looked at two of them. And, and yeah, yeah one, I remember that. I think Learn Dash is the WordPress version, but then you still right. need to host your videos somewhere. Um, right. However, those also they have, and they they have you can move around on their month to month and and the scale and their prices change, but um, you just have to also remember there's a lot of technology. And here's the thing, and this is where if I was doing it all myself, I would be crazily overwhelmed. And that was where with Isaias, it, it I mean he's amazing. Don't get me wrong, it's not that, but it it's that doing things on your own is just really really hard because not only do you have to do the work. But you got to be doing the marketing and the lead gen stuff as well, because you, otherwise you have this: you get client work, it comes in, you got to do the work. You can't be marketing and stuff, and then it drops. Right, that's, that's the main one yeah, of the really biggest hard. issues. That as you're working, you cannot do marketing, and then that's no, you don't want that. You need somebody getting those clients um, steadily yeah, all the right? time, yeah, so that you can focus on just getting the job done. Yeah. So, so you, yeah, I think I think I think that's a, a kind of like a starter point of yeah. you know basic general idea of how to do it yourself and the things that you have to keep in mind. I think um, I I do think always freelance is kind of like a transition. You can never just say, "Let me just start today." It's not going to happen. It it depends. Like you know, like I was one of those exceptions. I had zero debt. Um, I used to make a lot of money and I was, you know, I wasn't trying to build my business, but I was just at the point where I'm like, and my wife worked. So I had insurance through her where I'm like, I did just, over, I quit um, and, you know, went cold Turkey overnight and just said, screw it. But, <laughs> no, but that, that, yeah, it depends on, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you have enough money yeah. to, you know, be be fine, like not 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 be struggling to eat, right? <laughs> like that that's okay. Like it doesn't bring it much. But if you are dependent on your work or you know having your rent your basic needs met, then it is not a one thing like, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna quit and in the next three months I'm gonna have work. That took time. I actually think it took a little while for us to build that client base, right? Oh yeah. Well initially, I mean I don't know if you care if we mentioned this stuff, but initially, you know, you came to work for me and I was just paying you straight away. We weren't doing client work at all because right. I realized at the time, like I was working full time and I made good money and I'm like, I can pay, I can have Isaiah do my fun stuff, things I'd like <laughs> to be done. It didn't matter. And then you had to leave for a while. Well, when you came back, yeah. you're like, I need to make this much more. And I mm -hmm. told you, and it was funny. And I said, it was one of the best things that happened was you needed a big raise because I told you then, I'm like, if you, that's, I said, I, I know you're worth it. That's all, it never been a question. But I'm like, I can't just pay that out of my own pocket and not get right. you making money. I said, we're going to have to switch. We're doing we'll some time. For client work, yeah. right? Yeah, in order to justify this, yeah, I, yeah. I got to diversify some of the funding to not just me all right. the time. Um, and then, then, then all of a sudden, I'm like, Hey, we're we're I'm actually we're actually I'm making, making money. money. Yeah. Right, right. It's not a cost. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was funny. Think I would consider ourselves still building the client. Base. Oh, absolutely. We yeah. have a few sure. clients that are kind of like regulars, so to speak, but that's the thing. You never the one thing that you have to keep in mind, freelance work is never sure work. That means no, right. at any point we might not have enough clients, you know. So it is yep. something that if you don't have that built in a way that you regularly get new people, um, new clients, oh, yeah, there's an end to it. Right? No, there's the, not as, money here. Dan Kennedy says often, the the most dangerous number in the world is one, right? So like it's like you don't want one employee, you don't want one tax guy, you don't want one um, client. Right, whatever you need to have, more, and you don't want one stream. You don't want just Udemy. You don't want just YouTube. You want to build. Right. It's called in the Greek Parthenon, as I was called with all the pyramid. The, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. The, have different sources where things are coming in. So if one goes away, you still have a structure. Have the others, right? You, you have others to lean on because 
Um, you know, we also, which is something you might do already right now, right? While you're thinking about it, we, I created a Facebook auto hockey group. It's now the largest auto hockey group. I created a LinkedIn auto hockey group. It's, it didn't go, but the guy in charge of a lot of auto hockey group turned it over to me as a manager. So both of those, and now we're the largest YouTube channel also, um, on auto hockey, right? So I did those years ago. And it, it was part strategy of just like, I'm going to do it because there's no cost, right? And that gets back to assessing risk. Yeah. And, costs. Do, and also, anytime we create a script too, we'll go to, I'm like, don't don't create something that like to the nines, learn, and I have a couple of good books on it too, um, but learn how to do the minimum to get a read if it's going to be successful before you do too much, right? right? Risk analysis, you know, just do a little bit, make sure there's a demand. Then you can, like the hero group, we started off, we didn't go crazy on it, um, and it started growing, and then we tweaked a couple things. It grew more, um, and I'm like, okay, this is a real thing. We can we can keep doing this thing, but we didn't spend. It didn't cost us a lot of money to start it. Like it was, no. but now we have. Um, there's th- three employees and me. Uh, here's here's a, you know loads of fun. I'm sure you realize this. I don't get paid, right? <laughs> like I <laughs> lucky, <laughs> I make money. Like, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Everyone gets paid, and then at times they get even bonuses and things and days off and whatever. But when you're the manager and you're the owner of the thing, you know, you are, you're working the whole time. You're working the whole time and not, you don't even know if you're going to make money because there's other stuff costs that come up. Right. And you got to plan on everything. Right. Um, right. Not only that, but your taxes as well. So yeah, loads of fun. Basically just not everybody is willing to do this type of thing. But if you are, then take it slow. And as usual, it's never obvious what is going to be the money-making scheme, right? So you might start with one idea. Just look around and see what the numbers say. When the numbers point you in the right direction, then follow that, right? As soon as we notice, like, hey, client work is doing more than the courses, how can we improve that? Because that's where the numbers were guiding us. And that's what we're trying to do. But again, it is a step-by-step approach. And it's better to do one thing, even though you're doing it wrong. Just start doing that instead of doing nothing. <laughs> if you want to plan everything to make it perfect before starting, you're never going to start. Just start something, even if it's not the correct thing to do. But then you build on top of that and make it a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And at some point, you're going to see like, holy crap, look where I am. Yeah, but and I also I'm a big believer in what you said. Don't don't unless you're really bold. Don't quit your job. You know, start <laughs> off dabbling. See if you can get some client work. This and that. And hey, not that I'm going to suggest this, but don't be like me and quit where you don't get unemployment. You know, maybe get them <laughs> to fire you, right? Which then at least I would have got back some unemployment, but because right, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that ease into it. It's just definitely a, a much better approach. Um and and look at and and do like I did and say, hey, you know what? Even when I switched to doing automation, I still picked up project work doing what I really knew best. Um, even though I didn't care to do it, it paid the bill. It pays so much more doing that than the other stuff, at least at the beginning it did. So find other ways where you can make money to make ends meet when you have to, right? It's fine. Yeah. Exactly. All right, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. Please like the video if you learned something. And if you I'm happy to share, you know, more details or answer questions if you got them. Um, If you want to learn about real marketing that works, direct marketing is far more efficient. And Dan Kennedy is the main guru that I talk about a lot. He's a brilliant, brilliant guy. But he talks a lot about how to really lead gen and do things to also follow in the ace. uh, You become a celebrity. You're a leader. You know, and I forget what the educator But you, by doing those things, the people like and trust you and you become this go-to person, right? And that's what we've done with Auto Hotkey is like, that's why we also still do a lot of stuff. And we had the HK Con and things, right? Get involved with where you can to be in the front of people and be an expert um, and be that expert. And it it really, really helps, makes it much easier. Because you should, I should be spending money on marketing right now. We don't spend any money on marketing. And um, I, we probably could be making a lot more if we did, but um, you're spending money to make money, which you definitely, it, it helps, right? But right now we've just been doing our other stuff, which just brings people to us, which has been working great overall. All right, cheers. All right, bye.